If you film in DJI D-Log M and you want to get the best colour settings, you're in the right place. I've done a lot of research and testing to get the best results. This tutorial guides you step by step through the process, it's ideal for beginners or pros. I'll show you how to set up the project correctly using the largest colour space available and this will give you the best resolution and image quality at the end of the day. We'll create a basic node tree using colour space transforms. You'll learn how to save a lot of time speeding up the grading process using group clips. This allows you to make the grade once and then apply to all of your drone footage on the timeline. You'll learn how to adjust an individual clip. And then to finish off, we're going to export the grade you created so you can use it on other projects or send it to another editor. And there's timestamps in the description. Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how you can make your D-Log M footage look amazing and the right settings to use so that you don't have oversaturated colours and it looks perfect every single time. We're going to take it from D-Log M, which is really flat, to the colour graded version in a couple of clicks. First thing you want to do is make sure that your project is set up correctly. Go down to the bottom right hand corner here with the cog. And then we want to go to colour management. Set your colour signs to DaVinci YRGB. Timeline colour space is DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. And our output colour space is going to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. And I'm choosing Gamma 2.2 because most of my content's delivered on YouTube for mobile devices and computers and tablets. So that's the one to use. If you're going to be doing it for TV, then I would use Gamma 2.4. But for most of you, if it's on YouTube, go for 2.2. Then we need to go down to our lookup tables. And we want to swap 3D lookup interpolation from trilinear to tetrahedral. Press save and that's our colour space set up. On our edit page I've added in three clips. They're all D-Log M shot on a DJI Mini 4 Pro. What we want to do to get everything set up is go into the colour page. And then just make sure that your effects panel is open in the top right. And you can see all your options down here. Then we're going to go and create two nodes. By holding down an Alt and S creates one node, Alt and S will create the second node. Then in your effects, click on the search and we're going to do a search for the colour space transform. Drag it onto the first node, then drag it onto the second node. And then we want to click on the first node, which is going to be our input settings. What we're going to do is where it says input colour space, we're going to go for DJI D gamut. On the input gamma, we're going to go for Rec 709. You would think you'd go for D-Log, but this is incorrect. This will make your colours really oversaturated. So if we go by Rec 709, and then you want to set your colour space to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And your output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And I'm going to right click on this node label. I'm going to call it CST DWG for color space transform, DaVinci Wide Gamut. We're going to click on our second node, node label. I'm going to call it CST Rec 709. And now we're going to put in our output settings. So make sure you've got your output selected. And then you want to go for DaVinci Wide Gamut as the input color space. Input Gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And then our Output Colour Space is going to be Rec 709, so this will match our timeline. And then finally, our Output Gamma is going to be Gamma 2.2. And boom, look at that. How good does that look out of the box? So we started here with our log footage. We added in our colour space transform and now our colours look beautiful. I'm now going to add in a couple more nodes just so we can adjust things like the exposure, white balance and the contrast. So first up you want to grab your CST Rec 709 and just drag it across a bit. Just to make a little bit of room. Click on your CST DWG. Press Alt S three times. One, two, three. First node we're going to click on it, right click, node label. And I'm going to call this one Exposure, and I'm also going to call it HDR because we use the HDR wheels. 
Then I'm going to click on the next node, node label. Of course, we're on white balance. And the next one, I'm going to click on the node label and we're going to call this one contrast. So here's our nodes. If I go into exposure HDR, click on the node. And then the main difference that we're going to do is go down here. We're in the primary color wheels palette. We want to be in the HDR. Click on the HDR. And down here, we've got an exposure. This is more like how your camera would expose it. So you can expose overexpose by a stop or decrease by a stop just by moving this right or left. We see it's a nice gradual linear exposure change. If you want to reset it, double click on here and just press zero, then enter, and that will put it back to zero. So this is where you could go if you need to brighten up your image or darken it a little bit if you've overexposed or underexposed. Next, we're going to go into the white balance node. What we can do with this is set the white balance. And to do this, you want to be on your primary wheels and down on the left hand side here, we've got a color dropper. Click on this and all we're going to do is find something white. And when I click on this, we should see the color shift ever so slightly. So that should give you a perfect white balance. You can also adjust the temperature as well. So if you want it to be here colder, you can move the temperature to the left, which will make it more blue. And if you move it to the right, it makes it more orange. I'll put the uh, dropper back on and readjust that to white. And there we go, it's back to normal. With your contrast, one of the important settings you want to do is where it says pivot down here. Then you want to go down to here where it says pivot, double click this, and you want to set it to 0 0.336. There's a good scientific reason why we use that figure. Basically, camera light meters aim for 18% gray, so exposing a gray card to this value gives you a perfectly balanced exposure regardless of the scene's overall brightness. It acts as a stable reference point for your adjustments, preventing your image from looking too bright, washed out, or too dark. Which is why we use that figure. That's the calculation to get 18% grey. And to explain a little bit how contrast works, this is like your bright areas and this is like the darker areas. If I grab a point on here and start pulling it up, we'll see it's going to start brightening up a bit. And if I grab down here, it'll start darkening it. It keeps the image the same exposure because we set our 3.336 pivot point, the exposure shouldn't change. If you want to remove a point, you can right click it, it'll automatically delete. And that's the basics of contrast. We're going to move on now. We've done our color space transform on this image and pretty happy how it's looking. And we've got these two that are ungraded. If we want to copy the grade from this one to these two, all we need to do is command click on this one, command click, control on the PC, and then right click. And then you want to apply the grade. What that's done now is that has copied it from this one to the other two. So our colors should look absolutely spot on. If you don't want to go through creating all the nodes, I've got a massive time saver for you. I've got a free DaVinci Resolve project file where it's got all the timelines created. There's all different sort of frame rates like 30p, 24p, and it's all in 4K. And there's also a free DJI node tree included in it. So you can just drag it in and apply the grade, which will save you a ton of time. Here's a couple of workflow tips for drone footage that I use on every edit. Once you've got your grade set and you think, oh, I'm happy with this, what we can do is right click, grab still, and this has put our grade into our media gallery. Click underneath the digits to rename it. So I'm going to call this D log M DWG. So what it's done is this has made a copy of our node tree over here, which we can apply to other clips. I've gone ahead and reset all the grades, so it's as if you were starting a blank project. Here's all the ungraded clips. We're going to go into our colour page. I'm going to select each clip, holding down control or command. Once you've selected them all, right click. We're going to go add into a new group. Give it a name, DJI D-Log M. So what that's done is it's grouped all these clips together. Next thing we're going to do is on this little icon here, you see we've got these ellipses. That's like the current node window and it's only grading this image. If I click on the one before, this is called the pre-clip node. 
And if I go onto our grade that we created, right click, apply the grade, and check this out. It's applied this grade to all the clips in our timeline. So you can see there, they're all looking perfectly exposed, all the colors are looking fantastic. Because this is a group clip, if I make an adjustment to this, like such as the exposure, so I go to our HDR color wheel, crank up the exposure a lot, you can see it's adjusting every single clip in the entire timeline because it's uh, it's a grouped clip. If I bring that back down, back to zero, all our images will go back to normal. But what happens if you want to adjust a single image? Okay, so if I'm thinking that looks a bit dark in the shadows here, over on our clip, that's our group node clip, go to the next ellipsis along here, we can create a new node by pressing Alt S, I'm going to give it a node label, I'll just call it Exposure, EXP for short, and then we go into our HDR colour palette, and if I adjust the shadows on this, so down here at the bottom, if I'm going to bring the darker areas up, crank them up, so that's only bringing up the darker areas, it's only adjusting it on this image. If you want to send this grade to other colorists or use it on other machines, you can actually export. This is a separate file. You can right click this and then you can go to export, give it a name and save it to your desktop or wherever you want to keep it. You can then find that file and then you can just drag it into this window here. And there you go. It's imported into the project and you can do this with any of the color grades you make. If you want to delete a colour grade from here, right click and just delete selected. Well guys, that's pretty much the basics of how to uh, do colour grading on DLogM. Don't forget that there is a free project file available from DaVinciResolveTitles.com and it's got uh, colour grading presets built in and timelines and all that good stuff. So uh, feel free to grab a copy of that. If you found this useful, leave a comment below, hit that like button and smash that subscribe and if you didn't like it, hit that dislike twice and thanks for watching.